You're now listening to the 11:30 podcast. Enjoy the show. Yo, 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 what it do, everybody? This your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Wheels. Y'all already know what it is. Welcome back, everyone, to the 11.30 podcast. What's good, everybody doing out there, man? We made it back here. Another week for the show. Another episode, man. It's Wednesday. You know what time it is. It's not 7.30. It's 11.30. It's time for the podcast. Good morning to everyone uh, who's listening to me and watching, man, on YouTube uh, this week, man. Appreciate it so, so much. If you're new to the podcast, y'all already know, man. Hit that subscribe button down below. Like, be comment, do all that great stuff. And uh, don't forget to follow the 11.30 podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, like I said, man, I'm back at it, man, with the podcast. I got an awesome guest joining me, man, this week, man. Uh, film director, man. He's a camera operator. He's a writer. He's a podcaster. He's the host of Stupider Than Jupiter. Man, we're going to be chopping it up about everything, man. Uh, what my guy going on, what my, what my guy got going on, Shalom, is going to be joining me here this week on the 1130 Podcast, man. It's going to be dope. For real, we ain't going to waste no, time, no more time. We're going to get into it. What's going on, my guy? What's going on, man? I appreciate you even hitting me up and inviting me on. I'm ready to get to it. Hey, no problem, man. I appreciate you taking the invite coming on here on the 1130 Podcast. It's always dope having, you know, like-minded people and, you know, always having, you know, black entrepreneurs such as yourself, man. Uh, You know, everything you got going on, man, coming on the podcast, chopping it up on that, man. But I would like to treat you. Man, <clears throat> man, life good, honestly, bro. It just taking it and then working. Working long as I'm working, man. This is a good day. I don't even I don't take nothing for granted. So every day I'm waking up, get an opportunity to make my dreams reality. I, that's a blessing. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right about that, man. Every day, every day above ground is definitely a blessing, man. For real, and take every opportunity. Um, and be grateful, you know, for every opportunity, though. Know? But once again, thank you, man. Shalom for coming on the podcast here on the eleven thirty podcast this week. For my listeners and viewers, man, that's not familiar with you, man, because I've been checking you out and following you. Tell everyone about you, man, and uh, what you what you into. Shit, <clears throat> shit, just a shit, just a neighborhood black man, born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Shit, Southside, color part to be specific. I know it's been a whole lot of. Thanks to Amarella, she should have caused a civil war in the whole city. Everybody got down, slitting their throats and putting out maps and being like, nah, nigga, right here, they where I'm from, you fuck, what you say? I was like, I don't give a fuck about nothing. I'm too old for that, bro. I'm, I'm 30. It's, it's over with. I'm like, if you don't want to say Collar Park game from Atlanta, just go with me. I've been saying Collar Park since I was able to walk, so it is what it is. But yeah, man, I just, honestly, I just, I'm a, just a regular nigga that like to create. I like to give opportunities to other creators when I can. And honestly, I just like to make the dopest shit I can make. And this authentic to me. Uh, I understand, and we'll, I, guess, I guess we'll get to that as far as, you know, how the industry is, and as far as trying to get your own, well, you know, you got a podcast. Yeah, yeah. How hard it is to kind of get your voice out there without it being watered down by you know, the system that's already set up in place. And I honestly, it ain't even really their fault, but it just, but it's still a clash. It's still a battle. And to put myself in a situation to at least get some of my stuff out as much as possible, if I can get at least 70% of my vision to where it is, then to me, that's a win. Cause nine times out of 10, ain't gonna be a hundred. It just ain't. But if I can get 70, if I can get 70 through the door, then that's that's a, that's a win for me. So that's that's honestly what my overall goal is. It's okay. Just, okay. Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up, though. So you've been directing and doing film. How long you been doing that? In Korean. Oh Lord. Uh, ooh, almost man. About seven years now. Seven eight years. Well, I'll say it's, I've been dabbling in it in seven eight years. Professionally, it's been about a good four. So okay. I say professionally, as far as me getting paid and getting booked about four, as far as me just being like, oh, I could do this. I can do this shit. It was about seven. 
Okay, okay, that's cool, that's cool. And you got some dope projects coming up, man. We're going to definitely touch into that. Uh, but, you know, how, how everything started with you, you know, getting into, you know, uh, writing and film and stuff like that. Because uh, me personally, um, I always wanted to, I went to school, the community college here and there. But it just, it was like the school thing just wasn't my thing. I wanted to do more so like hands-on stuff, but, you know, like... Uh, film and uh, digital filmmaking and stuff like that. That was always me. And man, when the podcast came about, it was like right up my alley. But definitely, how, how, did, how did all that come about for you? <laughs> uh, well, um, kind of the same vein as you, except for um, in high school, yeah, growing up in high school. Well, one, you, I mean, you know, they're like, and I ain't, I ain't like, you don't really, ain't no, like film, really black filmmaker, what it is, but it ain't mm -hmm. enough to where you can see that and be like, oh, damn, I want to do that shit. You know, it ain't no, the plenty of black directors really in the limelight like that, that's really young and really making moves and doing their thing to where you can really see that and be inspired by that to do that or even be like, oh, that's an option. Where you coming from, where you coming from to kind of get to, get out of your situation. So me growing up, Man, my just honestly was just on everything that you ain't supposed to be on. <laughs> Girl, also, like I was when I was in high school, everything the education was the last, was the bottom of the list. I would, <laughs> I would, it was, it was, it was drugs, women, football, and then the education would be somewhere. Somewhere in there, I sprinkle education in there like a garnish if I could. If I could squeeze mm -hmm. education in, I can. But the primary focus was drugs and women, and those two split flop depending on the situation. <laughs> so that was just that was my whole high school career, bro. I wasn't, I had no direction. I just was like, I was just like, man, this it is what it is. And um, I got what really kind of shifted my focus was I got kicked out. <laughs> you got kicked I, out. <laughs> If you got education at the bottom of your list, you know, they just not, they not, you know, schools ain't going to keep fucking yeah. with you for so long. <laughs> but I kicked out, had to go to alternative school just to graduate on time. And that kind of, being in that situation made me kind of focus up and kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Not necessarily what I wanted to do, but definitely that I like, all right, once I hit 18, I already know I can't stay where I'm staying. So I'm going to have to figure something out. Yeah. And you no, know, what, 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 what was the moment that you, you were just like, you know, I got to figure something out? Uh, when my mom, when I got kicked out of high school, my mom was like, "Nigga, you can't stay here." <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "You have to figure." She was like, "I don't know what you gonna be. You gonna be? I don't care if you gonna be a J on the street. I don't. You, but you ain't stay here. You ain't. You graduate. You can't even graduate. Nah. Yeah, but yeah, shot. My mom was really like. I was, that's one of the things I also didn't want to do is disappoint my mother, you know, being a single mom, you know, working and going through what we was going through. I really, did. I didn't want to be a hindrance to her on top of all the other shit she was dealing with. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, let me get my shit together, man. And graduated on time. Uh, went to, didn't even go to college, just moved to Nashville, was working on, did mechanical work for a minute. Um, came back and was still basically just really just working. And uh, I saw a Transformers movie, and it, I don't even remember which one. I think it was the second one or the third one, and it was trash. It was trash mm -hmm. as fuck. It was so trash that I started rewriting the movie as I was sitting in the movie theater, being like, why didn't you see this? Why didn't you see that? And that kind of, and now, and just, and you get inspiration from anywhere, bro, because that, that literally, that scene made me like, be like, well, shit. I, I, if this is, if niggas is getting millions and millions of dollars to throw this on the screen, shit, I can write some shit and mm. you know put it on the screen, shit. And they getting millions and millions of dollars, I'll just do that then. And um, and I'm handsome, but I don't know if I'm Hollywood handsome to be like no actor or nothing like that. <laughs> so I was just like, well, shit, that ain't gonna probably happen. So let me see about this writing shit and um, uh, wrote my first feature. Uh. Took me forever. It was the format was terrible. I wrote that shit in Microsoft Word, but um, <laughs> that was the first spark, man. And just getting being able to have a story and put it on paper, and that just ever since then I was off to the races. I was like, this is it. 
Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. You got to start somewhere, man. You definitely got to start somewhere. Uh, was you not confident in yourself, though, to be an actor? Dude, Dude not at all. <laughs> what's the word? I mean, I could, I do a little bit in my own, like, I do, if I'm doing a sketch, I can play myself uh, and just kind of improv, you know, but as far as just being like a, a Denzel ass nigga or a Michael B. Jordan ass nigga, I was just like, yeah, that ain't, that ain't for me. No, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Hey, th that's kind of like how I was, uh, I me, me going to school and continue on what I was doing, I didn't want to definitely disappoint my mom because I knew that she was definitely a single parent and work hard and stuff like that. So I had to be like, man, look, here, I, I got to figure out something to do because, you know, I want to, you know, I wanted to buy my mom a house and make her proud, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to gotta definitely get into it, man. Definitely get into it. You said your film, now you uh making film and stuff and writing film. Uh, you got a film that's coming soon right now and it's called... I do, I do. Yeah, uh, you got a film called uh, Thank God for the Beach Boys. Um, tell yeah. me more about it, though. Um, It's basically... It's a short film I wrote, I want to say a while ago. Mm. Um, that I kind of been trying to get off the ground, do a couple of rewrites and things like that. And I really think, well, let me hurt all. First off, let me start to say what the actual film is about. Um, so basically, it's a, a dude named Noah, and um, who's went through a tragedy, and it's kind of made him close off from the world he don't really want to interact with people he's kind of just kind of taking it day by day not really really just doing the bare minimum he's just like i'm just going i don't want no human interaction i'm just trying to do his best friends uh basically he comes along to help him get out of his rut and get him back to talking people and trying to get him into a relationship try to get him really back into the world back into you know really enjoying his life because he's kind of in a rut, kind of depressed. And uh, this is just a feel good, it's a feel good romantic comedy. Um, I try to, I like to write everything, but I think romantic comedies and horrors is probably my favorite. That's like my bread and butter. I like to write those because I feel like they take, well, especially romantic comedies, kind of take the most work. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it right, and if you can get it to where people are, are fucking with it, even though they've seen it so many times, then that's a, a good measure stick for how how good your pen is. So if you can take a romantic comedy that's been done to death and have people still fuck with it, that means you you got something going. It's like a, it's a good measure stick for really a good measure stick for your pen. And horror I like because it's probably the easiest thing to get greenlit. If you want an original IP, so you don't have to have hard, don't have to be tied to an existing property. It ain't gotta have no book attached to it. You can literally come in and be like, "Hey, man, I want to do a do a movie about a lamp that eat people." <laughs> Ten million dollars, hey. even as stupid as that could sound, there is a streaming, there's a uh, studio or a streaming service that uh that uh, green light it because it's because it's horror and it's like you don't really you get free reign to kind of create. The world that you want to create, you just got to make it scary. Mm -hmm. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. With the movie, with, with the film you got right now, though, what inspired you to uh, write it? Is it kind of like based off of uh, your life? No, 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 no. Um, oh, based on yeah, the you know the concept. Uh, not really based on my life. I say, well, honestly, well, everybody's been through heartbreak, so everybody yeah. has been through the situation where. It's just like, man, fuck this relationship shit. I don't give a fuck all that shit. I'm just gonna goddamn yeah. hustle, get my money, yeah. and woo. You know, fuck all the fuck all that shit. I ain't even I ain't even gonna entertain that type of shit. And um I can definitely relate to that. I can definitely relate to being in a situation where you just working, you working, you ain't trying to talk to nobody, you ain't trying to, you know, entertain nothing but getting that money. Yeah, just and um and you can't get lost in that. And it can make you bitter without you even realizing it. You can really, like, start in not even just, you know, relationships as in a 
in a um, partner sense, but even in your friends and your family, you just start alienating people and you don't even know it. So I think it's, it is very important to kind of show that even though, you know, getting your money and kind of taking time for yourself to make sure your career is going good is important, but you can't just, it's also very important not to close off everybody because when you hit those hard times, you hit those the rough patches in life, which is going to happen, you need people in your corner. And that's the thing that I think I really wanted to get with the movie. And I and it kind of came as I was writing it, you know, how I wanted to kind of, because it did come off firstly as just a regular romantic comedy. And as I, I wrote it, I kind of wanted to have that be in the underlying thing that, you know, even though tragedy happens, even though you might get hurt, you still can't close off everybody because you're still going to need somebody to be with you at the end. Mm. I dig that, man. I definitely do. I definitely do. Uh, you say horror, horror movies and romantic comedies was kind of like, you know, more easy for you. Uh, any other, any other, are you a big fan of horror movies, though? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if they did. It's a lot of trash ones, but when they good, they real yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> it's a lot of trash ones. And then some of them be, be decent, though. But you can't really find too many decent horror films uh, nowadays, though. Not too many. Yeah. It's a couple out there. It's um, I saw X not too long ago. That was pretty good. It was it had a weird, it had a very weird premise that I fuck with. Um, what's another good one I saw? Um, what's that shit called? Ah, I'm blanking. I can't even remember what it's called. But it's on um, it was on Shutter. It was also real good. Um, Korean Korean people make some good horror movies. Like I mm -hmm. saw The Devil. Um, what's that one? The one about the school. It's a school. It's like zombies in the school. That shit was pretty I good. Know what you're talking about? I think I know what you're talking about. It's, damn, it's, I can't remember that shit. it's like, damn, I can't remember. If you if you Google like high school Korea Korean zombies, it'll yeah. sure show to pop up. I think it was on uh, Netflix. With yeah. that, that's it. It's pretty good. Uh, this is it's a show called The Servant. M Night Shyamalan's The Servant. It's just creepy as fuck. That shit yeah. is pretty good. Like, yeah, it's some good art, man. You just really gotta, you really gotta like listen to the reviews, and you really gotta like look for that shit. It ain't gonna be if you just go hard, you gonna get a whole bunch of prey yeah. through a whole bunch of bullshit. You really gotta like weed through them. But you, when you find them, man, they they is they are down, they gem. Yeah. They are, they are. I'm a big, I'm a big horror fan. I like suspenseful movies and thrillers, and like you said, romantic comedy. I like to watch it with my fiance because she, she don't like no scary type movies though. So <laughs> she be getting real scary. So I be like, oh, we got, we got to watch a romantic comedy or something like that. Um, but you, yeah. <laughs> what would you like to accomplish though in uh in the film business, or who would you like to work with and stuff? Mm. Well, first of all, the first thing, like I said, I want to accomplish is honestly to get as self-sufficient as possible. So, you know, I already have my own production company, Cheap Therapy Productions. Um, that's where everything, honestly, every anything that I make runs through, goes through that, between from the podcast, uh, my sketch show, um, any projects, any movies I do, all that runs through Cheap Therapy Productions. And honestly, is to kind of grow my business, kind of work with everybody I want to work with, but also, like I said, be in a situation where if I want to make this type of movie, I'm in a situation to kind of make it happen. I don't have to go look for funding or I don't have to go in, ask a studio to green like this or green like that. I can just be like, hey, I'll fund it. All I need you to do is just handle distri distribution. And when you come up, when you come to the table like that, it eliminates a lot of the pushback on it because their their risk is extreme. You just eliminated, you just drop their risk extremely. So that's the thing I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to where if I want to make something purely for myself or just purely just from my artistic viewpoint, then I'll have the tools and the, I'll be in a situation that had a foundation to do that. So that's my ultimate goal is to get to that point. To basically be just Tyler Perry with dreadlocks. That's my whole, <laughs> that's my whole, <laughs> that's my overall just be like, I can just make whatever I want. <laughs> Now I don't know about the quality because I fuck with Tyler Perry business wise. The quality, yeah. I'm like, we going to have that. That'll be a different conversation because <laughs> I, I didn't even been in Tyler Perry studios in a couple times, and the folks would be like, "So you like, like, oh, 
<laughs> hey, that's what's up. That was, hey, I'm like, hey, man, I, I just be like, I just, I just, I just switch it. I'm like, hey man, this is great to see black people working on it. Sh- on the- <laughs> like, hey, but yeah, hey. you like it, but I'm like, man, you know, this is good for the community, bro. We just got everybody okay working, but do you like it? But man, see, that's what I'm talking about. What we need more in the black community, just working together. Oh, uh, but like, like, yeah, that's. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, that's what's up. You can be it. You can definitely be it, man. I can believe you know, but Tyler Perry, he definitely, he's the man that way. He could just, just make anything, just put out anything. Yeah. And people gonna watch it though. People definitely. Mo- uh, it's, it's, but see, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's one thing to have people watch your shit. It's another thing people watch your shit to laugh at your shit. And yeah. they ain't laughing with you. If you got a whole drama and it's, and it's motherfuckers getting beat on and getting raped, but everybody laughing, that ain't that ain't good. That's that's the problem. That's the issue. Yeah. Uh, is, is it a movie that you want to make that, that you haven't make, made already? Or a uh, film? Um, yeah, it's about... It's a couple I haven't made yet that I really. It's a couple that I'm I'm kind of waiting to get to where again, getting to where I know I can kind of do it the way I want to do it. Um, it's one film called Chemistry that I want to make. That one is more plausible. It's just really just etching out the budget and how I want to do it. And but I definitely that one's gonna be a little bigger budget because it's a, a little grandiose of a story. Um, the second one is this show. This semi, it's semi autobiographical, autobiographical. I can't even speak, man. See, this is why, this is why stay in school, kids. This is why you stay in school and go to class instead of trying to smash everything they walk around your face. Go to class, listen to your teachers. Cause you want to be on the podcast one day in case they autobiographical. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, that's definitely another show that's near and dear to my heart that I really want to kind of put out. Um, again, it will require some money and a lot of things that I want to keep in it. That I'm like, all right, I'm gonna need some, I'm gonna need some clout to push this through. But yeah, those two is for sure my babies, and I got an anime I'm working on too that i that I really really want to do. But I'm like, that's really gonna take because it's I want to be all black, not all black, but I definitely want the main characters to be black. And that's kind of un, I only say unprecedented. It's just not part of anime, really. Period. Mm. So I already know that one's gonna take some, take some pushback, take some clout. So I got a couple things that I really want to do that I'm just like, I'm gonna have to just be patient. If I want to do it the way I really want to do it, I'm just gonna yeah. have to be patient. I'm gonna have to grind. You know, get my name out there, get my IMDb credits up before I come to him and be like, hey, this is what I want to do. I got to show that, hey, I got a track record of making quality, of quality work. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, that's dope. That's dope, man. What, what keeps you inspired? What inspires you? Life. Life, man. I dig it. I like that. Life. Life inspires me the absolute most. There is no other better muse for writing than life. Because I didn't, the things I didn't, Cause there's certain shit that I've written down or projects that I've made and people always be like, where did you, how do you come up with this? I'd be like, life, nigga, life, <laughs> like this shit, like, Adrian, like I wrote, um, I wrote a sketch and someone was like, nigga, this is crazy. I was like, yeah, this really happened to me. And they was like, you, you lie. And I'm like, nigga, this, this shit really happened. <laughs> I was like, so a lot of the stuff, the situ- especially the situations like, or the ideas that I get just come from life, man. Just come from living. So, so if you want to be a writer, man, you better don't just be like sitting in the corner and just come up with shit. I mean, you can, I guess, but you know, man, I gotta live life. I gotta go take road trips. I gotta talk to people, different people. That's also very important. Different folks outside of you know your living environment. You gotta travel, just talk, see how other people are living. Everything you just like you gotta experience life and that'll definitely help your pen, right? Yeah. You right about that, man. I can definitely dig it, man. Life life will definitely expire you, man, and when you're definitely talking to different people, getting out of your circle and uh just vibing with it, man. Cause and and those be the best stories though. Those be the best kind of stories that to be that, that have people really invested in. Just um real life stuff. Real life shit, man. For real. Yeah, man, that's the most relatable shit. Like people yeah. don't it's one thing that kind of you make some Game of Thrones shit where it's 
bombastic <laughs> and it's a medieval time and it's dragons and it's magic and it's it's old women with their titties out. You know, that's gonna get people that's a good thing to get the red soap, but but the things that hit people like for real for like that that, that penetrate, penetrate culture. See there it goes, stay in school, kids. <laughs> Penetrator's culture is the thing that they relate to the most. That's why you look like insecure. You look at uh, blackish. You know, you know, I don't really fuck with blackish, but you know, that's that's a story. That's a podcast for another day. But even though I don't, I don't like it. I can still respect the fact that it still permeates the culture, and it's still something that people are willing to get behind because it's something that they relate to. It's something that they can see. And they day to day, and they like, oh shit! Because it almost feels like you talking to them, like, mm-hmm. oh damn, I didn't even know. Even Atlanta, as weird as that, that is, there's a lot of shit that's very much based on real life and based on things that people go through on a daily basis that probably doesn't even get brought to the light. And then here's a show that's bringing it to the light, so they automatically feel connected to it. Mm-hmm. Hey, you're right. You're right. That, that, like you said, man, the best ones, the best stories be uh, the real ones. Hey, yo, uh, shout out, man. We're chopping it up here on the 1130 podcast. Uh, we're going to take a quick, quick commercial break, everyone, man. When we come back, we got the WTF moment. We got the hot seat, man. We're going to keep chopping it up, man, on some trending topics and more. We're having fun here, man. This has been a dope vibe. Shout out, you having, you having fun? Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. I love I love podcasts, right? I love podcasts just to get up, just to get on, just talk shit. I love hey, hey, that's what's up. Hey, that's what's up. And we're gonna continue that right after this, you guys. For real. Don't move. You're watching and you're listening, you're watching to the eleven thirty podcast, you guys. Don't go nowhere. With unlimited DVR and personalized recommendations, YouTube TV is live TV reinvented for the 21st century. I prefer some of the earlier centuries, personally. He does. I do. (laughs) You can start watching YouTube TV right now without having anything installed in your house. But having a technician come would motivate me to clean up, so... Uh, You can watch YouTube TV on multiple devices at the same time. Multiple devices? But if we watch different shows in different rooms, we drift apart. I don't want to drift apart from you. I'm so sorry. Try YouTube TV for free. It's everything live TV should be. Yo, what up? This your boy, Ken of Stones, A.J. Coffee, Weasen. This your boy, D.O.E., Good Brother Bowl. And we are the Dirty, Dirty Hills. Hills. You already know, man, you tuning in to 1130 Podcast. Mm-hmm. Not 730, but 1130. Dude, dude, that's my job. Not 730, but 1130. <laughs> yeah. And you have been <laughs> Dirty Hills approved. Yo, we back here on the D 1130 podcast. Appreciate everyone sticking with me throughout the short break. I got my awesome guest, you guys. Uh, Shalom, camera operator, podcaster, host of Stupider uh, Than Jupiter, you guys, man. We've been chopping it up here. Um, just about everything, my guy, man. Shalom, been uh, got going on and uh, everything, man. Yo, but we're going to keep the podcast uh, going on, you guys, man. It's time uh, for the WTF moment of the week. <laughs> Yes, WTF moment of the week. Shall I? Each and every week, I always have a WTF moment, man. Um, something crazy, weird, whatever, man. You have seen her. Always allow my guests to go first. But yeah, you have a WTF moment you would like to share? Oh, I got a lot of them. <laughs> I'm to, now I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to think. I got a lot. <laughs> man, uh, I'm gonna keep it all thing. We'll talk about one in film that I saw. So. I'm working on this reality show. I can't say which reality show, but it's a popular reality show. And um, I'm a PA at the time. This is a long time. They're about 2016 something. And I'm PA. And um, there's a couple on there, married couple, and they argue. Before the scene, before we even shoot in the scene, they argue. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> They are again, the director is able to kind of delegate, get them to calm down, and then we go and to shoot the segment, 
same segment, you know, live. It's kind of, it's kind of, we, it's kind of up and down when it comes to reality TV shows. But film the scene. I'm just going to say scene. While the husband is filming the scene, the wife is not in the scene. But his phone goes off in the scene. He answers the phone. Now I'm assuming that prior, this prior argument has something to do with the with a phone. Because the wife comes into the scene arguing with the husband and then where the set we was at had this sword. Like a samurai sword. Okay. And while they argue and the wife decides that she enough is enough, grabs a samurai sword and stabs this nigga. Wow. And when I say stab, I mean like through his body. Like stab as in through his chest out the other end. On set, all this <laughs> why we rec why they record it. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> this nigga stabs. <laughs> and he like, bitch, you stab me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was and it was like it was crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I'm just thinking about it. I was thinking about it. This nigga gets stabbed. He's just like, "Bitch, you stab me!" And he don't even. And he don't even. He a slow. He a semi slow ass nigga. So he don't even like. He ain't even really bleeding like for real. For real, it ain't like the movie shit where you get stabbed and blood spray everywhere. He bleeding, but it's more like slap, and then it's like dripping. So this mm. nigga stabbed. Bitch, you stab me! Ooh, he trying to swing, and she trying to pull the shit out. She stabbed this nigga again. And so we had to grab her. It's shit, blood everywhere. Motherfucker, one of the makeup ladies done slipped on the blood. She done fell. It's shit is pandemonium. So call 911. Uh, paramedics get here. They can't remove the knife because Linda screwed the sword because the nigga will bleed out. Mm -hmm. So he, he had to literally get all the paramedics to sign NDAs because they can't talk about this shit. And this nigga had to ride in a motherfucking ambulance with a sword in and out of him. And my director. This I knew. I was like, I gotta be a part of the film. This so this nigga was like, <sighs> all right. So he was gonna run down the scene. Then <laughs> I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> we gonna do what? <laughs> that nigga just got damn. <laughs> we all doing this. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm dramatized. I ain't doing the what? Just start <laughs> what? Man? Just start shit. Uh, that's what I was like. Yeah, I gotta. <laughs> if somebody gets stabbed, and they just be like. Alright, yeah, so we're gonna just do the other scene and uh <laughs> Look, like, the, yeah. Yeah. gotta keep up so rolling, boy. But that's the the show must the, go, the show must go on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's, that's crazy. I ain't saying I wasn't wow. wanna say that's what I got a way more, I got a whole bunch of other what what WTF moments, but that's <laughs> one as far as film go, that's the one that stick out to me the most. That one got that one hold the candle. Oh man. That's that's a WTF moment, man. Oh uh, man, I got two of them though, but you got another one, man. Since I got two oh, of yeah, them. I got another one. I get I get I got, I got a business <laughs> one, I got a personal one. That's what I'm saying. I was like, I got them. Hey, I tell you, but life, you better live your life. <laughs> I got I got I got a couple, man. But um I give you okay, this this is this is the one. This is one, this is a good one. This is a good one. Um so I'm living in Nashville. And uh, this is probably the most white people I've not only conversated with, but have seen in my entire life. And if you know anything, one thing that's already stereotypical about white people is that they lie to dr love to drink. That's not a stereotypical. That's a culture thing. That's mm -hmm. their culture. Yeah, is to, we are going to get fucked up. We are going <laughs> to drink so much that we no longer look like human beings. We look like motherfucking fish out of water. Mm -hmm. Like, we are going, if we not blacking out, you not drinking right. If you not at least killing minimum 10 beers, you are not doing, you have not understood the assignment. You do not understand <laughs> the assignment, sir. The assignment <laughs> is <laughs> to drink until you can no longer move. So, <clears throat> it was one night. Um, we was at, we'd already been drinking before. We went to a bar to um, 
just at the bar, just fucking around at the bar. And I'm, at the time, nowhere near 18. I mean, nowhere near 21. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I think I'm 19 at this time. But another thing about Nashville is they don't give a fuck. They like, I literally have walked in liquor stores and gas stations and bought alcohol. Now I got carded. They ain't asked me no second questions. They don't give a shit. They just like, hey. You, you look the part. Yeah, they just like, you look the part. Uh, yeah. You look the part. Close enough. It's like, I don't know. Close enough. Close enough. You know, it's, it's, don't worry about it. So. We had already been pregame before we went to this bar. Came to the bar, drank even more, and um, started. So started talking to these white girls, as you do in Nashville, because you know predominantly white, which is very weird, because there's a lot of like, like subliminally racist shit that they just say. This is like you kind of like. Um, uh, just you kind of guys got to like step over the red flags. You know how you just trying to smash, and you just got to like you just stepping over all the red flags. You just be like, I never been with a black guy before. And you're like, ah, I don't want to throw that red flag away. Yeah. Um, oh, it's like four, five guns. Eh, throw that. Don't worry about all. Just ignore, <laughs> ignore all the signs that you should be like, this shouldn't be a good idea. So, talking to these white girls, they invite us to their house. To, for some after party shenanigans. <laughs> so we all leave and everybody kind of drove their own car because and just in case somebody was like pull, you know, pull something by themselves, they can just go ahead and go and not have to be like, well damn, I roll with my nigga so I can't go smash you. Mm -hmm. It's more just like, nah, can't yeah, be everybody. All right, I'm out. I'm out, y'all. So everybody hops in their own car and they head over to old girl's house. As I'm driving, I'm GPS now because I'm not from, from there. I get turned around and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going. And I get pulled over by 12. <laughs> I get pulled over by 12. And um, he's like, where you going, boy? And I was like, uh, uh. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to die in Nashville, bro. This is how I, this is how I go. This is how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Nashville, trying to get trying to get some white pussy, and <laughs> so so I tell so I was like, man, you know what? Because I'm literally because he was like, you driving on the wrong side of the road and all that all this type of shit, and I'm like, have you been drinking? And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, yep, I'm fucked up right now. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep it a band and hope, and you know, whatever happens happens. So I tell him straight up, I was like, man, I'm out of town. You know, I'm living here. I'm trying to make it to my friend's house. I'm following the GPS. The GPS got me turned around. I have not been drinking. You know, this, I'm just trying to get to my friend's house. So I he give him my ID. I was like, you know, my ID, Georgia ID. I was like, I, I was like, my license plate still. I still got Georgia license plate. So I was like, I promise you, sir. I'm just lost. I just, I did leave him. I was like, I'm just trying to get to my friend's house. I've not been drinking. I'm just trying to get there. So I showed him the address. He looks at the address. He's like, well, you got to be careful, man. You're going to cause an accident. And he's like, well, this isn't that far. He's like, how about I'll just, you just follow me and, and I'll show you how to get there. So, <laughs> I get a police escort. Wow. <laughs> he put up to the house. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. And Yo. I was like, you can't pay you over some pressure. <laughs> Got a police escort to the white girls. I was going to the white girl's house and they was freaking the fuck out. All oh, they was like, yo, you okay? <laughs> what the fuck happened? Like every, cause everybody does again, nobody's 21. No, but like none of my friends are 21. The girls, I don't even remember if the girls are 21 or not, but I know for a fact none of my friends are 21. So they just see they see 12 pull up and they see me pull up and his bag pull up with his lights on. It wasn't mm. like he was just like, yo, just follow He had literally cut his lights on. It was like, follow him. So it's literally like, like 12, <laughs> pulled up with the lights. Then me, I pull up. <laughs> and they was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> a police escort, though. Oh, uh, police oh, escort. Man. Police That's... escort to, to <laughs> nobody in my house. Mm. I'm, a, I'm very amazed, bro. I'm very amazed that I'm because I really thought, and this how fucked up we is. Because apparently they had been smoking too before I even got there. Like they got so paranoid, they was like, "Bro, what if they? This is a trick. 
they was like, oh, they going to a white woman house. We just go get some backup, camp out. So when these niggas leave, they will arrest everybody. So we be like looking through the windows every five minutes to see if it's like some twelve hitting in the bushes or some shit. Cause we was just for sure like we just go all we going to jail, bro. Ain't no way we just got a police escort to a white woman house in Nashville. Like it ain't gonna be no repercussions for this. It's like no, this this is no, this is nah. We're not trying to this at all. <laughs> Did somebody offer the policeman something to drink or anything? <laughs> no, we they was like he was like he was cool, man. It yeah. was really weird. It was really weird. Yeah. <laughs> he was yes. he was eerily, he was eerily way too cool. I ain't never met a 12 that cool at all. Mm. Not even no black ones. But just be like, yeah, I'm gonna get your police escort to this house. So I was just it was, it was like, okay. They was they was trying to say shit. They was just like, okay. But yeah, man, he pulled off and um had a good time and that was it. That's that's another personal WTF moment, but like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> that ain't that's life oh, that man. You talking about yes. <laughs> That's a WTF moment, man. That's a WTF moment. Getting the police escort, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got, I got two of them. I, I guess I go ahead and uh, I just go ahead, go ahead. WTF moment. Uh, one of them. Well, both of them you may have heard. One of them definitely you may have heard. Um, uh, I believe it was over the weekend or whatnot. Um, the uh, killing that what the killing at the supermarket with the eighteen year old yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. I, I thought that was real crazy though, and the dude had the nerve to uh, stream it live on. I don't, I don't even know what he uh, streamed it live on, and someone was asking uh, questions, the typical questions that they always ask uh, a white yeah, guy, yeah, uh, and, and some type of you know mass shooting or whatever like that. Oh, was he mental stable? Look at he went there, he bought the gun, streamed it live, and he had all body armor on and whatnot, and uh, a video that got leaked out. Um, I think I saw it on the DC Young Fly uh, page, but it was like a two second video where, you know, he was going in and, um, you know, doing what he was doing and ran into a white man and was like, oh, sorry, you know, and all the people that, you know, he killed was black. And it was uh, a racist yeah. hate crime. Like, Damn. I, yeah. I didn't see that part. Damn. Yeah, like, it, it's crazy, though. 18 years old, though. 18 years That's old. Crazy, man. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I didn't see that. I didn't see that video. I might just look at that. I didn't know he was just like, excuse me. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Tim 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 Black people and Yeah. That was that was that was real crazy. Uh another one. Uh WTF man, for real. Um imagine being on an airplane and you about to um, you know, travel, go somewhere, whatever you gotta go to. You gotta be somewhere and uh, the pilot uh lose conscience and you passenger know. another passenger and the incapacitated pilot were in a plane just like this one it's a cessna 208 it's also sometimes called a caravan let me take you up here into the cockpit now the one passenger darren harrison he was in the back seat of the plane so he had three rows to climb over to get himself all the way up here into the cockpit he had to pull the incapacitated pilot back from the controls because he'd slumped over. Then he had to grab the controls, pull the plane back out of a nosedive, and then look for these, look for some headsets. But unfortunately, the headsets were disconnected. So in the chaos, he's looking for a place to plug in so that he could then call the tower for help. This morning, the men behind that midair mayday are still celebrating a perfect landing. You're like a hero. I feel like a hero. I, I kind of feel like um, maybe I don't deserve it. Bobby Morgan is the air traffic controller and part-time flight instructor who talked two passengers on board this single-engine Cessna 208 through a safe touchdown at Palm Beach International on Tuesday after the original pilot fell unconscious. I've got a serious situation here about pilot and John Darren Harrison, who had no idea how to fly a plane, sprang into action as the aircraft took a sudden nosedive over the Atlantic. 
The pilot was slumped over on the controls and, and then they pushed him back. They, they get him out of his seat and then they had to get on the controls and pull back the plane so that it would climb up out of the dive that it was in. Eventually, Harrison was able to determine the plane's airspeed and altitude, allowing Captain Morgan to direct him through the dramatic descent. He just say, uh, you, look, you look great. You're a little fast. What I want you to do is grab the throttle. Just pull that back a little bit because we need you to be slowed down. You're teaching him to fly. Basically. As he's flying. Yeah. But the toughest stretch was still ahead. The emergency aircraft is going to be landing runway 14. As the aircraft approaches the runway for its final descent, it disappears from radar, leaving Morgan anxiously waiting in darkness. Is everybody holding now? Yes, everybody's holding. It must have been no more than 10 seconds. And I, I kept trying to talk to him. And he said, I'm on the ground. What do you want me to do now? <laughs> you how were do, like, <laughs> how do you stop this? And my heart just kind of sank. And I was like, just thinking, thank God. <laughs> Did you say the passengers landed the airplane? That's correct. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. No, great job. What a student. Yeah. Yeah, my best student ever. Wow. Best dude never, no kidding. And he just seemed so calm. calm. We keep talking about him. Mm. Do you know anything more about this passenger who's never flown a plane before? Well, you know, I thought this guy must be like a heart surgeon or something because he was so calm. Turns out he is the vice president of an interior design company, but he was as calm as any fighter pilot. We all can imagine, like, the crisis it would be mm -hmm. in the cockpit, not knowing what you're doing. Even the instruments were blacked out and couldn't even tell folks, you know, at the control tower what was going on oh because there was gosh. nothing there. And then on top of all of this, he did it while wearing flip-flops because he was coming back from a fishing trip <laughs> oh down gosh. in the Bahamas. But he had incredible motivation not only to save his life and the others on board, but his wife is pregnant. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Carrie, can't Carrie. take it. you got to find him today. Yeah. Okay. And you know what? what? Do you think interior decorators can't handle stress? Listen. You send the wrong I shag just... carpet to the house. They're used to that. You'll hear, you'll hear some panic. All right. Yeah, I remember seeing that uh, somewhere. I don't know where I saw that at. But yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about you, though, but ah, that's, that's, that's a big job. That's a big responsibility to do. And I don't have no training whatsoever, though. Like, I don't know. I don't know. W I mean, hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't you know. He was just like, bro, today ain't the day. Ain't today. I was like, <laughs> nah, nigga. We're going to figure this shit out. But that made me think, like, how much do pilots really do? I understand they do. I know they do. I ain't going to try to diminish their job, but I'm just like, okay, if, I get, if I get a YouTube video on how to fly an airplane, can I fly an airplane? If I just pull that shit up, hey, you stand up to the side and just look at it and just be like, okay, you need to put in. Hey. Right, this button, pull this down. Uh -huh. so like, yeah, but nah, shout outs to him, man. He's just probably like, nah, we're going to figure this out. Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. And nowadays, man, you can just get on YouTube and figure everything out now. Most definitely. Uh, uh, but you guys, uh, we're going to move on here on the podcast, man. Uh, we're down to the Easterns and Westerns Conference Finals of the NBA Playoffs. Um, I had Phoenix going all the way to the finals, though, but they got eliminated. Um, they got eliminated. Who did they play the other day? They um, Mavericks. Yeah, Dallas Mavericks. They got to play the Dallas, Dallas Mavericks. Now the Dallas Mavericks will go on to play Golden State and Boston won game seven over Milwaukee and they take on Miami. Any favorites in the uh, conference finals? Uh, honestly, bro, I don't usually, I don't usually take favorites in, in any sports, honestly. And I'm more of a football dude than an in a NBA dude, but unless I'm betting on the game, I usually don't take, like, take sides. I did like Phoenix personally, only because I wanted Chris Paul to get one before he retired, but I think it's yeah. too late. Man. I think it's I think he he almost hit he about to hit forty. It's it's over with. I hate to see it, but it just it is what it is, man. Because every time they get he get close, bro. Every time he get close, and it ain't all on him. But it just be like, man, they just be playing trash, bro. I don't know why. Like I I didn't even, I didn't even see the whole game. When I was I was watching game six. And I was just like, God damn, these niggas is just missing shots. <laughs> For real. <laughs> like, they were just like, Rick, Rick, 
Rick. I'm like, God damn. I was like, yeah, nah, I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah. But uh, yeah. shout out to Dallas though. Shout out to that young boy. Uh, uh, Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah Luca. 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 Yeah, he, he off the chicken right now. Yeah, he balling, man. He doing his thing. So show, man. Hey, I, yeah. I love me an underdog story. He playing go to state. Yeah, he playing go to state. Yeah, I'm about to give it to go to state, bro. Only cause. I just don't. I don't see them. Them niggas ain't gonna. At this point, I don't think they gonna. My thing about Golden State is like once they get to, like once they hit conference and finals, finals, it's really hard to beat them because they done been there so many times. They done played so long together that it's just like man, it's like it's, it's like it's not really too many kinks unless you got, especially unless you got some veterans on the other side. And with Dallas being so young. I, I just don't see them pulling it off, man. I, don't, I think they're gonna give them a run for their money, but I don't think I don't think I think they're gonna I think Golden State gonna scoop it. And, and Jimmy Butler and Jimmy Butler's a psychopath. <laughs> Jimmy Butler's a psychopath. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it to Miami Heat, man. Because even if he don't win, he probably gonna knock somebody out. Yeah. He just happened to play basketball on his in his spare time. But he a he a full time sociopath, part time NBA player. Yeah. <laughs> how, you, how you feel about uh how you feel about um my guy who played for uh, I can't even think of his name right now. He played for uh the seventy sixers and stuff like that. Um, uh, to my James Harden, James Harden, yeah. How you feel about James Harden? Is it the same way with Chris Paul? Do you feel like it's too late? Oh yeah, man, it's too late. I think, and I think it's even worse for him because he already got the reputation of kind of being a team killer. Like he don't know how to really play with on in like a team environment. He don't really know how to like gel with mm-hmm. seem anything because if he not like the primary focus. Then they kind of like fall apart, and if he can't even, you know, be that, put up forty, put up fifty points, then and all type of people not really fucking with you, you know, outside of, you know, you just playing basketball, it's gonna be real hard for him to hop on another team because nobody really fuck with him, like nobody really like him on a personal level, and you can't, and you ain't really a type of person to kind of come into the team and be like play your role. If you always used to be in that nigga, and but you can't no longer have the qualifications to be that nigga, it's like, what do you, what you gonna do? Yeah. Cause even in the seven sixes, he was coming in really second billing. He was really supposed to be back up for Embiid in case yeah. he didn't fuck up. But shit, once Embiid fucked up, it's just like Yeah, it went down, it went down here from there. It didn't seem like they had a whole Philly had a chance uh, once they left. Uh, once they let uh, Ben Simmons go, and that just went downhill from there. But uh, James Harden, man, it just seemed like everywhere he go, man, it just seemed like it can't get right. From Houston, from Houston to Brooklyn, from Brooklyn to Philly, now it's just I don't know. Maybe too late for him, though. Yeah, maybe. It's probably- <clears throat> maybe. Uh, but you guys, now we gonna move on here on the podcast. Speaking of podcasts. Uh, Shalom, man, your podcast, Stupider Than Jupiter. Uh, tell everyone about it when they can catch new episodes, man. Yeah. Stupider Than Jupiter, man. That's your grandma's favorite podcast. <laughs> Shoot it. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get back into it, man. I've been busy as hell in the, in the in trying to just doing the film industry and just shooting stuff for other people, working on my own stuff, writing. But I'm trying to get back into it because I truly, honestly, like, man, podcast, because that's just that podcast is unadulterated me. Like, ain't no filter, ain't no, ain't no kind of me towing the line. It's just me and my friends saying the stupidest, ignorantest shit we could possibly think of to talk about. We talk about relationships. We talk about, you know, pop culture events. We just did an uh, episode on Willard Smith and that whole situation and my homeboy that came that was on the show with me, shout out to two four, Midwest in the building. Um had a very we honestly had a very different um take on it. It was real good. And he cause he's married and he hit me with some shit that I didn't even think of because I ain't married. 
And when he hit me with it, I was like, bro, I didn't even think about it like that. <laughs> I don't want to give it away because I want y'all to go check it out. But like, yeah, when he, when he explained it to me, I was like, damn, I didn't even think about it like that. I was like, nigga, you absolutely right. <laughs> but yeah, the Super Blue Jupiter Podcast, man. We um on all the platforms, Spotify, Google Podcasts, on the Uzi too. Easy to on the YouTube. Uh, we got clips on IG. Stupider than Jupiter on every on all of that. Um, but yeah, man, check us out, man. I got. I'm gonna try to do. I got a new episode coming out. I want to talk about the Kevin Samuels thing. Not necessarily about you know his death, but just about kind of the, just the the visceral. Because I don't know if you've seen it, bro, but just just the reactions to this man's death have yeah, been, I know. have I'm... been very just. <clears throat> Yeah, I spoke about that last week too, just about how a lot of women was just going crazy about that, man. It's crazy. <laughs> and it's it's just interesting to me because I've watched his videos, like I've watched probably three or four. They long as hell. They like over an hour. So I've only watched like three or four. But even in those three or four, now granted, he said some shit that I don't agree with, but he never said anything that could have motherfuckers going on Twitter talking about I'm glad he's dead and and God answered my prayers and all type of crazy. I'm like, what the fuck? Like for real? It Compared was to, like nigga <laughs> ain't Hitler shit. <laughs> it was like, what, damn. Like, what it the was, fuck? Like it's just crazy, bro. It's yeah. crazy. It's like man, that's that's just crazy to me that uh, a lot of women so that women is just glad this man is dead. Mm -hmm. Based on his opinion, like based on something that his is his views, you don't have to agree. You can disagree, but that's one man and one viewpoint, and clearly somebody agreed with it, or else he wouldn't have got as popular as he did. Mm -hmm. But you can't sit up there and be like, "Yo, this man, I'm glad he did because he said some shit I didn't agree with." Like, he ain't punched nobody, he ain't killed nobody. It's, all he said was, yo, if you fat, you probably don't get a six-figure-ass nigga. Like, <laughs> now, he said it probably harsher than I did, but I'm like, that's essentially every video that I come uh, come across has essentially just been like, yo, this, this is what you're coming in this with. To get what you want, you ain't gonna get it with the tools that you have now. So mm -hmm. if you either drop your expectations and you can get this or if you do want to get this you're going to have to change some of this and that's mm -hmm. essentially all what he's saying yeah. and it's just weird to me that that just caused so much hate it's just weird man but yeah we're going to definitely get into that I got I'm going to try to get a couple of um, couple of my home, home girls to pull up mm -hmm. I got I to gotta choose, choose wiser though because I ain't trying to get punched in the face <laughs> so I ain't, I ain't trying to turn it into turn the studio into WWE. Hey. So I gotta make sure which one um <laughs> who I invite on. Hey, they don't gonna keep it cord keep it cordial esque. Hey, but yeah, man. yeah, that's man, I love, I love doing my podcast, man. I really do. Okay, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely be tuned in, and the leaks will definitely be down below. And just like you were saying, man, as far as that, people don't like the truth. People people like the truth to be a little bit filtered. They don't like it to be straight oh, up raw. Yeah, man. They don't like for it to be straight up raw and up front, and you know, it, it, it feels some type of way. It's not it's not comfortable to a lot of people. Know, it, it definitely not, especially when it especially when it comes to women, man. It's mm -hmm. like women say they want the truth, but they don't want. And I don't think mm -hmm. anybody really wants to hold. No. Yeah. Like one hundred percent raw, unfiltered truth. I think men can handle it more because we hear it more. Because mm -hmm. you be, you get that, you've been getting that shit. I've been getting the, the unfiltered truth from my mama since I was shit mm -hmm. seven. So, so hearing it, so I hear it on a daily. So I've been hearing it for longer than a lot of women have, and I think that's just really what it is. It's like it's just a lot of truth and a lot of like. But again, it's like. That's his opinion. Like you can still be like, okay, I understand. I get you what you're saying. I don't agree yeah. with it, and keep on like, it's just, just yeah. so much, 
just this. I just ain't never seen nothing like this, bro. It's look, just crazy look, to me. Look, look at it, it's 2022. You'll get slapped in your face just for saying your opinion nowadays, you know? <laughs> you'll get slapped in the face, you know, if you if, if you were uh, Chris Rock or something like that. But just for saying how you feel, man. So yeah. it, it, it is I mean that situa that situation is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> that situation is a little different. Again, check out my podcast if y'all just want to hear my my whole opinion on that situation. That situation is a little different than Kevin Stanger's situation. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man, I agree with you, man. Like it's just, but just the but but it's one thing to slap somebody. It's another thing to just be like, yo, I'm glad you're dead, and you got kids. <laughs> like, this man got kids. He got family members. It's just weird. It's that's just it, that's just weird to me. Yeah. Could just be like, just because I don't agree with your opinion, I'm gonna wish death on you, and I'm gonna just and if you dead, I'm gonna just cheer. Like it's just weird to me. That's just yeah. But like I said, Jupiter and Jupiter podcast, we definitely get into that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I feel you. I feel you. it's definitely it's definitely weird. The links will be definitely down below, you guys. Uh, but we're gonna move on, you guys. Here on the podcast, it's time for the 11:30 podcast. All right, all right, all right. It's time for the hot seat, shall I, man? I got six questions for you. Uh, let me go roll with it. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, all right, all right. For what in your life uh, do you feel most grateful for? This gonna sound fucked up, but women. Okay, why? Cause. <laughs> <laughs> but one, I say, I I do the I do the basics. But one, I wouldn't be here without a woman. Literally, okay. life life begins with a woman. Like like everything starts there. So you know, from that aspect, you know, I literally wouldn't be anything without a woman. And two, um, when I was in middle school, I was kind of I was very insecure. Like I had no type of self esteem, no type of just nothing. I just was, I was very down on myself um, until I got some pussy and <laughs> and, 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 and I got I it when I was thirteen years old. I got some. It was terrible. Last year, <laughs> a solid. Like a solid four minutes and thirty seven seconds. Hey, yo. A strong, strong four <laughs> minutes and thirty seven seconds. But after that, man, after like I had and I didn't even do bro, I didn't even do anything. Like I literally I did the I barely I was barely able to keep a conversation going. So the fact that back like, that was enough for me to get some pussy. And after that, man, it was like I was off to the, I wasn't off to the races, but that that was the, the seeds that planted me to kind of like get out of my shell and to just be like, well, I already know what the end game is. So now I got to just work on getting there. And then once I did, once I was just like, well, I just be myself and, you know, I don't got to be, you know, Drake levels of like simpish. But if I'm just honest, honest, like just really just be honest, man. Just, if I'm just honest about my intentions about what I want. If I think a girl is pretty, I call her pretty. And leave it at that. Don't try to. I'm so beautiful. But just be yourself and just be honest and be direct. And then, man, after that, I was off to the races. Oh my god, <laughs> that's what broke me out, man. If I, if I didn't have, man, ain't no telling what type of person I would have been. Especially oh, when I was in high school, I was like, man, ain't no telling. I don't, ain't no telling how type of person I would have been. So yeah, <laughs> women, women, oh. man, save my life. That's what's up. Pussy I'm saving this life. close. I'm this close. <laughs> this close to getting a shirt made that says Pussy Saved My Life. I want to do it so bad. Oh, I man. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> I might even do it for, I might do it for my next birthday and just be like, nah, I got to do it. I'm sorry. Oh, and then man. Put it, put it up somewhere because I'm just like, every time I, I talk about it, all my homegirls and my mom and my sisters be like, nigga, do not. <laughs> Do not do that. <laughs> oh man. Okay. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. Uh if you could do a good deed in order, if you do a good deed in order to feel good about it, is it kindness or is it a business? 
That's a good question. I feel like if you strictly only do good things for something in return, it's definitely a business. Because to me, the epitome of kindness is going out your way to help someone else without any. Now, if it comes to you, then, you know, that's just the universe repaying you back that way. But to just expect something good to happen just because you did something good for somebody else is you really not. That's you really just delegate. You really not doing it out the goodness of your heart. You're doing it because. Okay, I'm gonna get this out of it, and it's very rare that that happens, man. Like even in nonprofit organizations, it's always even with them. Their sole purpose is to be help people and be quote unquote a nonprofit. They still get grants and they still get things from the government to give them money. Even when you adopt and you bring a child in your own to help them, you get paid for that. So it's very much it's very rare that you really see people who go like, oh, I'm going to help this person and like, I don't expect anything in return. This, that's very rare. So yeah, no, that's definitely, if you expect something back from being kind to somebody, that's definitely a business. That's a business strategy all day. Okay, okay. I agree. I definitely agree. Okay, if you can make a TV show slash movie, what would it be about and why? Just anyone? Anyone. Man, it's a lot. <laughs> a lot of shit I want to make. Um, yeah, man. It's a lot of shit I want to make. Uh, well, I'll go. I'll do it like this. I want to do... Well, like I said, I definitely want to do um, um, an anime with um, black protagonists. Um, I definitely want to do a video game um, property. Either movie or film, probably probably TV show. <clears throat> uh, I want to do Bioshock, honestly, but they already make it. They are working on that, so but I don't see why. They, but I definitely want to do a Bioshock. I would love to do a Bioshock series. I love Bioshock. Um, <clears throat> like that whole world, the way you know the themes of it. I I would love love to do a Bioshock show. I I would also like to do a Red Dead Redemption show. Um. I also like to do, I would like to do also a period piece. I would like to do like a, like a kind of a fantasy, like an all African kind of fantasy Game of Thrones type show. Okay. I think that would be dope. Like kind of take like the medieval aspects and mix it with like African culture with all the tribes like Kosa and Zulu and I think that'd be really dope. Okay, cool, cool. I can dig that. I can dig that. Okay, the next question is definitely a topic that you talk about on your podcast. Uh, is cereal soup? <laughs> oh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> is cereal soup? Mm. Honestly, yeah. I say, I say it is. Okay. I say it's cold. It's just cold. It's cold soup. <laughs> cold soup. Cold soup. Okay. Okay. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, I had that uh, question answered. Uh, uh, I asked that question multiple times and got the same answer. Same answer. Uh, okay. Uh, how would you feel about society and the world today? Mm. Uh. I feel, I feel, I feel like it's a paradigm shift coming. I think the way society is now, I think give it twenty years is going to be very different. I think there's a <clears throat> there's a very much a distrust and a disconnect between how things are and how things need to be based on um, the economy, based on the social structure of how society is going. I think it's going to definitely be a, a paradigm shift. I think it's going to be slow. It's going to be really slow. But I think it's definitely going to shift a lot. Um, 
it's uh, that's a big question, man. Because it's hard to kind of say society in a whole because you only live in when you think of society, you really only think of your the area that you live in that you reside in. So what I consider society would be different from somebody else. Like even in, in Atlanta, like me being from Collar Park, uh Collar Park, East Point, like West End, Southwest Atlanta, that society is gonna be very different from somebody who lives in like Buckhead or Druid Hills or Brookhaven. You know, their idea of what how society is going is gonna be very different from how I think society is going. Yeah. So even but I think but I think overall I think it's gonna definitely be like some very big changes as far as how society especially from a capitalist standpoint. So I feel like it's getting we getting to the point where especially with like how prices is and inflation and especially in Atlanta, man, it's so like the housing market is so bad. It's super bad. Like I just think it's going something's gonna have to give or or shit gonna get real, real, real fast. Cause it's a lot of home. It's so many homeless people. So many homeless people with so many people who are still working. You no know, job still offering fucking seven twenty five an hour, but fucking rent minimum like to get a, even like a, a room, just a room to rent a room is like seven eight hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. So it, like that shit don't equate. Like some something, something's got to give. Yeah. So right. yeah, I think it's, I think I think society's definitely is definitely gearing up for a change, man. I think something something's gonna have to give. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, you're in a biopic. You're in a biopic okay. about your life. Uh, who would you Who would you uh, have play your brother? But yeah, it'd probably be. Oh, all right, man. I got it. So my older brother would be Daniel Kaluuya. He definitely played my older brother. And then my younger brother would be Junior off of Blackish. Like the actor that plays Junior off of Blackish, that would definitely be my, my younger brother. Okay. Not look wise, but personality wise, that's for sure my little brother. Cause he was he's born, he is a suburban kid through and through, man. It, it's it's just his mind state and the way he thinks, I'll just be like, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. We definitely had different experiences growing up. Still yeah. love him to death, though. He still, he still <laughs> handling his business, but it's just like certain, certain the way he be coming up to certain conclusions. I just be like, yeah, okay, all right. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, yo, uh, shout out, man. I appreciate you joining me this weekend on the eleven thirty podcast, man. It was dope. Before you go, man, shout out to any questions, anything you want to say. Oh yeah, man. First of all, first and foremost, man, thank you for inviting me on here again. I had. Anytime. So much fun. Um, I'm going to have to figure out a way to get you. Because you don't stay in Atlanta. You're in D.C., right? Yeah, Washington, D.C. Yeah, man. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get you on the podcast, man. Because most of our stuff is um, in person. We shoot in the studio. Yeah, in person. Okay. But yeah, I, def- I would love to have you on the podcast, man. But, um, yeah, like I said, first and foremost, I want to thank you for reaching out to me, inviting me on this platform. Um, I really enjoyed myself. Uh, so shout outs to you, like I say, first and foremost, for inviting me on. Um, shout outs to everybody who worked on. Thank God for the Beach Boys. Uh, Tony George, great actor. Um, Joel, great actor. Um, Kiana, great actor. Go ahead. You got to just go ahead and look them up. You can see their um, IGs on my page if you go and look at it. But yeah, phenomenal actors, phenomenal work. Shout outs to my brother for helping me do the camera work. Shout out to Austin, my other camera, cameraman. Um, really just sticking it out with me and working and having fun and taking taking direction well. I really appreciate all of them. Uh, shoot, man. And like I say, shout out. Um, check out my podcast, Stupider Than Jupiter. Your grandma's favorite podcast, you know. I'm trying to get it weekly, man. I'm trying to get back to doing it weekly. Um, I'm trying to get back on it, man, because I really do enjoy doing it. And check out some, my, check out the episodes, man. We get we get ignorant, man. I'm just I just try to forewarn people because they be like, y'all be talking about the stupidest shit. I'm like, yeah, yeah you do. Hey, like, no filter, ain't no like. <laughs> 
like one of my favorite podcasts is 85 South Show, and that's really what I kind of model it, model it off of. I don't really try to be biting too much. I don't really want to just do, you know, a carbon copy, but like that, that like, you know, very unfiltered, mm-hmm. conversational type of yeah. podcast is my favorite, man. I like just, so we just gonna sit down, we just gonna have a chop it up, have a regular conversation. Yeah, when I when I before I got podcast before I started podcasting, I would listen to some WWE podcasts. I'm a big wrestling fan, and the '85 South Show, love them, love them. I know I'm not a comedian, I know I ain't funny, but you know, <laughs> those guys was another reason that kind of like inspired me. It was like, hey, you know, if you go ahead and do it, man. Look at if you build it, they come. So you know, yeah, man. hey, them, them, those are my guys, man. Most definitely, most definitely. And hey, look at man, this was definitely a vibe and definitely dope. You know, you welcome me anytime, and I appreciate the kind words, my guy. Definitely gotta uh, drop through on Stupider then Jupiter. Uh, for everyone who's watching, man, the links will be down below. This was definitely a good one, Sean, man. Uh, sit tight, we're gonna chop it up after uh, after the show, man, for real. But everyone, I appreciate everyone coming on and joining this week here on YouTube on the podcast, man. It's been a dope one. But before I head on out of here, y'all already know, man, don't forget to follow The 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. Follow me on Twitter at The 1130 Podcast. Like The 1130 Podcast on Facebook. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to The 1130 Podcast on YouTube. And also, The 1130 Podcast, Talk Pro Wrestling, all new episodes, uh, Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. You dig? Other than that, man, I'm not going to keep on rambling on. It's been a great one. All the links, like I said, will be down below for my guy, Shalom. Man, when I do these episodes and get over an hour, I... I gotta find me some water. <laughs> gotta find me some water, man. Throat be dry, so I don't know what. But <clears throat> this was a dope one, man. Uh, for everyone, stay blessed, stay safe, man. Give all the glory to God, man. Won't he do it? I'll be back next week here on the podcast. Yo, it's your man Dre, aka Dre on Wells, from my guy Shalom. We out, man. Oh.